Welcome to the Amiga CD32 episode. My name is Gemma and if you're new here, thanks for stopping by for some gorgeous retro gaming action. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you my brand new Amiga CD32 bundle and I'm gonna be deep diving into some of the games I've really been playing. I've been capturing the footage here and it's very exciting, I'm so excited. Um, now, a lot of people over on my socials said to me, Gemma, why don't you get an Amiga 1200? And I explained that I have a 500 plus, I have a customized 600 fitted with a GoTech drive and lots of ROMs. So I wanted to go for something that was completely different in terms of aesthetics of its hardware and try to play the Amiga via CD other than kind of floppy disk or through my GoTech drive. Now the bad news is when I bought this bundle, it unfortunately came the controller needs to stay there. It came with backup disks only. So whilst I'm still on a wild rampant hunt for some gorgeous um, true games, I am kind of running this off my backup disk. So do forgive me, but I own all the floppy disks for my Amiga 500 plus. Additionally, this one came with a third party um, controller rather than the Amiga CD232 controller which is apparently plagued with difficulty. I've never actually used one so I can't actually comment on it so for the purpose of this video we're going to be using this which resembles a PAL Super Nintendo console. So we're going to dive into it and uh, we're going to enjoy this gorgeous nostalgia pit for the Amiga. <laughs> Let's kick it off with some Alien Breed, which is a classic Amiga game and a must-have for any Amiga owners. Alien Breed, or should I say Xenomorph Breed? That's right, Alien Breed was based very loosely on the awesome aliens and it takes the form of a top-down shooter. As you can see here, I'm entering into the first level ha having just embarked from my ship. Now, one of the really cool things I like about this game is the little tidbits of information that you have on the weapon screen. I mean, just take a look at the details on those guns, for example. I mean, for me, that was just like, wow, blowing my mind back in the early 90s and in 2021, it still blows my mind today for such a, I guess, a small budget game compared to what's out there now. Pulling off something like that really added a little bit of flair and finesse. So when I actually got my Amiga CD32, one of the, this was one of the first games I put in. I've always been a fan of top-down games such as Loaded on the PlayStation 1. I kind of felt there were some vibes from Loaded as well, even though that actually came out after. And uh, I also think this game sounded pretty good, especially when you kill these darn aliens. <laughs> So admittedly, I was a little bit rusty and I had to refresh my memory using a YouTube guide on how the heck I meander through this first level and you have to collect different keys. So in the top right hand corner, you can see it says keys and there are certain doors you have to open. But obviously, if you run out of keys, you can't open the doors. So you need to collect cash to be able to go and buy key packs that enables you to progress through the level in order to complete it by finding the lift. And I love this cool lift animation when you complete the level. So Alien Breed, if you are an Amiga owner or an Amiga fan, or potentially you might be an upcoming Amiga owner, this is an absolute staple title, in my opinion, on the Amiga. And if you're a fan of the 80s Aliens franchise, then I do believe you'll find some charm in this. It's quite a difficult game. Um, and it's it's just, you can really kind of angle yourself in the right position to be able to take a good shot on the aliens. Although 
otherwise you die just like I did right there. There is also a follow-up to this, which I'm definitely less familiar with. And I will say this, guys. When I've been out doing my retro game hunts and my retro game thrifting, whether it be at a gaming market, I have never seen an Amiga CD32 game out in the wild. This was quite an obscure console and with quite obscure games, even though the game titles weren't very obscure, the actual you know, say Amiga CD32 variant of the game was quite obscure. So it's really, really cool. I'm happy to own one and I'm happy to continue playing and putting out more Amiga CD32 content here. But we're going to be taking a look at some more games. Again, unfortunately, backup discs that I've been playing on my Amiga CD32 in this episode. Next up, we're going to go with some Lost Vikings, one of my favourite games on the Super Nintendo. But how did it fare on the Amiga CD32? The Lost Vikings are the three musketeers of the 16-bit and certainly the Amiga CD32. This variation doesn't necessarily differ in terms of its gameplay mechanics. We play the role of three Vikings, all with different abilities, and you have to use all of the Vikings in order to progress through some of the actually very difficult levels. Now, this particular variation, the CD32, is my first time ever playing the Lost Vikings, and I will say that the colour palette definitely lacked, and the sound was a little bit grainy compared to the Super Nintendo. Whilst this, for me, is a belter of a title and one I'll always go back to, especially now I have it on my Amiga CD32, I found that when I was navigating the Vikings from left to right, obviously I'm using a replica Super Nintendo pad, and I found that, if you imagine a joystick, when you go up ladders you'd press up on the joystick if you were playing it on the Amiga, but the control pad seemed to think that I was pressing up no matter when I hit the ladder, which was a little bit annoying in terms of the controls. If you watch closely in this video, you'll see it, ha see it happen there, and I'm trying to kind of get off the ladder, but it kept saying, oh no, Gemma wants to go up. So that was, that was something that I found really annoying on this variant, but nonetheless, it's a wicked game, and but I think my go-to will definitely be Lost Vikings on the Super Nintendo though. So a little bit rocky in terms of its graphics and its controls and that's because it's very difficult using the D-pad like I said when you're side scrolling to maybe go right or left and you accidentally hit um, a ladder because it's a D-pad but it's kind of joystick controllers the character automatically wants to go up the ladder which can be a little bit annoying and it did hinder my gameplay a little bit on the Lost Vikings. A classic Disney title next with Aladdin. Started off a little bit rocky in this one, but managed to get a bit of a flow the more I practiced. Boy, did Disney give us some fantastic games back on the retro consoles and again like the lost vikings playing aladdin on the amiga cd32 it was my first time and it did look it did look a little bit better it didn't look as blocky or as smudgy or as pixelated as what the lost vikings did um but again i'm just kind of getting used to the control system here but i i i, I found i had the similar kind of problem um obviously aladdin always wanted to jump when i was circling from left to right and i don't know if that was because I was playing with a controller and not a joystick and there was a little issue with the um, the controls but it could have just been me being a terrible player which is probably more likely to be fair. But as with any video game the more I played the more adapted I felt and I slowly started to get a rhythm and I forgot how much charm this this game actually oozed and it was really nice to having gone and played it on the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo I actually really enjoy going over to something like the Amiga and playing these titles on the Amiga because it just my mind naturally casts back to how good things were on the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo so I really like having this um, this benchmark of the Amiga CD32 on my gaming palette, on my gaming uh, resume, if you would. And this, again, it's a very difficult game. I did play The Lion King, but I, I'm not so keen on The Lion King overall. I never even liked it. 
back on the 16-bit consoles. But this is a good game and I'm happy to have played it and I will go back to it on my Amiga CD32. So yeah, I had the same issue as what I had with the Lost Vikings and that was when you're side scrolling left to right, the character automatically, Aladdin, the character, uh, automatically wants to jump, which was the, um, you can jump as well by the using just up on the D-pad as well as one of the trigger buttons. So it was a little bit annoying, um, and, but I don't think it's one that I would go back to on the Amiga, but I wanted to put it in this video for that purpose exactly. Oh yes, the classic Lemmings. Now I felt right at home here because the Amiga CD32 also enables you to plug in an Amiga mouse and play the likes of Lemmings utilizing your mouse, which to be fair, it's probably meant to be played with your mouse. This game sounded really good. It looked exactly like I remembered. And I actually played Lemmings on the Amiga before I played it on any other home computer or any other console. And I tended to find that when I tried to play Lemmings on a console, it didn't have as much appeal as what it did on the Amiga. So I can't praise this game enough for its just awesomeness and its ability just to take me right back into my friend's bedroom playing on the Amiga 500. And I had so much joy playing this all week. It's a really good game and I know a lot of you guys have been posting to me about your love for lemmings as i've had a couple of community posts out here on youtube asking what amiga games can you recommend and nine times out of ten lemmings does crop up in there as one of the staple titles so if you've never played this game it is a strategy game in which you have to get a certain amount of lemmings from the entrance to the exit as safely as possible and along the bottom bar there's different little things you can do such as you can dig you can utilize some of the lemmings as a block in order to change the direction it's really really cool it's really quirky and arguably it was ahead of its time um so this is wicked i'm stoked to, to, to own it and uh, long may lemmings live and i think it is time we had a lemmings reboot what do you think is this next character a crab? Is he a fish? This is James Pond. Somewhere deep below the ocean waves lies the top secret headquarters of FI5H. Reporting for duty is FI5H's top agent, James Pond. Call me a little crazy, but I actually think James is quite a little cutie with his ability to be extend himself and reach platforms that would somewhat be completely out of reach with a basic jump. James Pond oozes charm and again this was another video game franchise that I first discovered on the Amiga so to be able to dive into it for the first time on the Amiga CD32 I felt right at home. Now as I've said people have been asking me why I chose to get a CD32 over perhaps a 1200 and I wanted the ability to have the different hardware. I find that the loading screens are a lot faster, there's no changing of floppy disks or you know on the GoTech drive being able to change the disk on the GoTech drive, we can literally plug in the likes of James Pond and away we go. And as you guys can see behind me, it is now time to take a look at my favorite game of all time, Lotus Turbo Challenge, this being the trilogy. I'm gonna show you all three games, gameplay. Um, again, started off really terrible, but actually picked up and scored a couple of firsts in this. The Lotus Trilogy. We're going to kick off with Lotus T Esprit, sorry, Turbo Challenge, if I can get my words out properly. Now, it seems to me that uh, this is your personal favourite, as we've talked about this on my Instagram, we've talked about it on most of my socials. And I love Esprit, but it's not my favourite, but I loved the details in this game.
So here I am, babying my way through one of my first races, and to my surprise I actually believe, if I remember correctly, that I win this one. Now it's a great game, it's really easy to control, um, not so much with a joystick though, I have played this using a joystick, and obviously with me I'm using my third party uh, controller. I don't know what this would feel like utilising one of the Amiga CD32's official um, pads, controllers, so if you can maybe answer that question and fill in some gaps I'd be very very grateful. Now I also love the split screen animation at the bottom as well with the two guys working on the car. Love the no smoking sign, got almost like a little calendar or something off to the left hand side of where the guys are working. I mean it come on. If you don't like it, I don't really know what to say. For me, I was mesmerised by it back as a little girl and it was one of those games that I did play with my friends Matt, John and Richard. I think it was John who was the bigger brother out of the two, he had this on his Amiga running and I remember thinking, wow, why can't we afford an Amiga? I want to play this in my house as well. But I had to settle for the likes of Top Gear on the Super Nintendo. That was probably the closest I would come to playing Lotus Turbo Challenge on my home consoles. Lotus 3 next then, and I have always loved this screen here where you're able to pick whether you're automatic, manual, what course you want to go on, how many players you want. I like the fine tuning of that there. And obviously, the, just the details and graphics and sprites here of being able to select your car. I'm guessing the majority of you think that I would have picked the yellow car. Obviously, I'm a girl and it's all about colour for me. I don't know about statistics and cars. That's ridiculous. But I didn't pick the yellow. I actually picked the red, the classic red Lotus obviously boasting a little bit of the outrun finesse there as well. I also liked that little race screen there. Um, I don't know why the, the game is actually paused here. It took a while for me to get off the ground, but nonetheless, we're off. And I think for me that this has a little bit more charm. If you look in the background, I just think there's a little bit more, a bit, bit, bit more to it. And um, there's loads of bridges. There's absolutely loads of bridges. And this kind of, there's a turbo zone in this. I mean, it was just such a good game. I found it slightly faster as well. But this same time just as easy to control as a spree and typically if you know me and you watch my live streams over on twitch go and give me a follow you'll know that i'm actually terrible at racing games you know i used to play PUBG, and when i'd get in a vehicle in PUBG, it was an absolute disaster and a guaranteed loss but with something like the lotus turbo challenge franchise i could actually play this game and feel good and now i can play it on my cd32 it's easier it's just awesome do have it on my 500 plus as well with the floppy disks but how cool is this though come on and the final but by no means least game of this awesome trilogy we have lotus 2 again it looks very very different and what i think is good about esprit 2 and 3 is this the difference in graphics i think you can tell which game you're playing and i really really like that um for me this is probably the more polished out of the trilogy with in terms of graphics um, but it's it's kind of not it's probably my least favorite in terms of games that i'm going to go and sit down and play but i want to know from you which is your favorite lotus game and i want to know what your favorite memories from this awesome trilogy is we even get to jump logs as you saw there we flew into the air and obviously there's the kind of aquaplaning over this water here which i thought was a nice touch a little bit of flair so that's something that is really different in this game and overall it's a massive thumbs up from me So there we go. This Amiga CD32 was fully recapped when I purchased it from the seller on eBay. It had been recapped by um, Retro Passion. Shout out to them. Uh, I was initially going to buy one from them, but it was going to take quite a long time to get here. Um, and I was desperate to dive into my Amiga fascination at the minute. There'll be a more Amiga content to come here. So if you like Amiga content, um, please subscribe. For those that want an update on my moving house situation, you can see that the game room actually does look pretty messy and out of place. 
Hopefully there'll be one coming this week. I have had some feedback from my solicitor, but I'm not gonna go into it. But it is a thumbs up and hopefully we'll be moving soon. So there'll be additional kind of moving videos as well. So, but thank you for watching guys. Retro Gaming lives on right here. Subscribe, leave a like rating and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. I need a few seconds of your time to tell you about channel memberships. If you guys want to become a channel member, click join from the main page or the second link in the description. There are three tiers, all with different perks for you if you want to become a team member. Thanks for your time. Let's continue with the video.